Though this can seem like a city without history, it is somewhere that has an abundant mythology. The myths of full employment, of a classless city, and of a place that was, until recently, a backwater, were created by the all-defining currents of the North Sea boom. The present reality of the city has been obscured by these myths, but so has the history of its industry, its culture, and its people. On a far greater scale, a similar process followed the collapse of the Soviet Union. As an idea was discredited, a century of popular struggle in the name of emancipation and equality was forgotten. The debris of that conflict is visible here, scattered across the city and hidden in plain sight. What can these remains, and the memories of those who were there, say to a place where freedom is still a distant spectre, while the spread of ambient wealth appears to have eliminated the will for struggle? Traditional focus on industrialisation and say Glasgow, Clydeside, West Central Scotland, Aberdeen has very much been overlooked. Um, however, it had a very strong sort of liberal socialist presence. Um, the Eight Hour Day, which was a very significant campaign, um, sort of in the 1880s, Aberdeen Trades Council was one of the first trades councils in Scotland to support a motion in favour of it. So, you know, we have the traditional perception that this may have been Glasgow. However, it wasn't. It was Aberdeen. But I would say this, in the last few years, that I have been very much enthused by the young radicals coming through, uh, young men and women who are refreshing themselves by looking, and this is back to your point about the Soviet Union, learning the lessons of the mistakes of those who experimented with socialism. But I think that all the movements that there are now, um, the Occupy movement, all the kind of protest movements that there are going on, are all coming from a generation who, you know, are thinking. Uh, I'm not saying that previous protest movements weren't thinking, but there tended to be that idea that there was action and there were ideas, and somehow it's about how you bring them together. Uh, and some people would be bringing them in from the outside, as it were. I don't think it's happening like that. No. I do think there has to be new forms of organisation, and that has to be seriously thought about. But um, I don't think it's going to be done by one of these so-called political parties coming in and, uh, you know, and showing the, the rank and file what to do as it were. Seven and twenty years, that long? It seems but yesterday, we left that war-torn hill above Gandesa. Is it perhaps because I'm growing old, that thought now skips so lightly down the years, and the travail of a quarter century? melts in the vision of those great days, those days we lived and knew that we were living. We were at war, 
and yet we were at peace. We knew a peace we had not known at home, where conscience nagged and conflict raged within us. Spain. We woke each morning to the thought of Spain. Spain in our thoughts all day, and into each troubled night. No freedom fight is ever really lost, while we can learn. Each human mind's an outpost, and the frontiers of freedom expand, conquering minds and hearts, prelude to the conquest of cities and of states, till the world is wholly free. And then, we will strive for higher freedoms still. I moved from Northern Ireland in 1985. I've been active in the trade union affairs in Ireland. Uh, I was secretary of a trade union council over there. So it was a, a natural home when I arrived in Aberdeen to get involved in Aberdeen Trades Council. But the plus for me, of course, was that the Trades Council in Aberdeen actually had a social club as well. You know, I'm 54 now, but you know, I arrived here, I was 27 years of age. I was for, I, Aberdeen was a lively town at night. Uh, so I always frequented the club for one or two pints, and at the front bar there was what was nicknamed the Kremlin Corner. Uh, predominantly the people who formed the club were people who came from the kind of the left tradition, the socialist tradition in the city, and that was a mixture of people who were active in the Labour Party, various socialist parties and the Communist Party as well. Go down on Saturday nights to Dundee, for example, to sell socialist papers, a paper called the Workers' Press in those days. We would sell hundreds of them, whereas in Aberdeen it was like drawing teeth going around the pubs and so on. But against that, in Aberdeen, when that first, um, those first manifestations of the kind of disruption, if you like, in the post war settlement were coming up, you had major strikes, particularly against the Heath government in the early 1970s. And in Aberdeen, when the uh, postal workers were on strike, for example, they used to have uh, daily marches along Union Street to a rally. I don't know if that happened in any other centre. Um, when the building workers were on strike, there were huge um, rallies down on the links. Um, and all the, and the dock strikes of that time, I remember. I remember going with dockers up to Bucky because they were going up there to pick it because they were. The, the North East ports were kind of regarded as scab ports when Aberdeen was, um, was solid, and, you know. There is so much we want to see once more. We will stroll in the Puerta del Sol and the Ramblas of Barcelona. We will cross the Ebro and drink with our friends in Mora. Friends who will be free. We will look at them and at each other and each of us will think, this is why we came in 36. And if we live to be 100, we'll have this to be glad about. We went to Spain. Because of that great yesterday, we are part of the greater tomorrow. Hasta la vista, Madrid. One of the major strike, uh, industrial struggles in the Thatcher period after the miners had been defeated in 85, was the offshore workers' um, industrial actions in 89-90. And um, these were really an attempt by a, a group of workers whose, whose activities were fundamental to the British economy at that time, whose uh, industry was actually critical in providing the funds that made the Thatcher experiment prop, uh, uh, possible in, um, in the 1980s in Britain. They, they kind of had the idea, well, the miners got defeated because they were a declining industry, but we'll be able to succeed because our commodity is absolutely vital. And they did succeed to the extent of getting wage increases, but their main concern was the safety regime after the Piper Alpha tragedy in 1988. And they didn't uh, get very far, although the North Sea is now far more unionized than it was, but by and large it's a fairly uh, conservative and collaborationist form of trade unionism. Living memory, 
walls and plaques retain the traces of a movement for social emancipation and everyday freedom. To stop and look at those traces is to remind ourselves of the past, but is not necessarily an indication of the future. Can there, nonetheless, be a link between researching the history of political activism and practicing political activism? Generally, yes. In the context of history, and yes, generally, I totally agree there is, and there there should be, um, and obviously, it's it's difficult to say, but it's almost like a it's like a circle. One helps the other, and one exists because of the other. Feet and sand. 